blessed to have you and for your willingness, really what I know is your desire to be here uh, making our prayers come alive. So thank you. Shabbat Shalom. This coming Wednesday evening, as we sit down to Seder's, Seder is unlike any that most of us can recall, recall. We will pour a symbolic fifth cup of wine intended for the prophet Elijah. And as always, despite the bizarre innovation of comedian Mark Jaffe and his self-draining cup, it's real, you can see it on YouTube, uh, that fifth cup, Elijah's cup, will properly and appropriately go untouched, unimbibed. Its symbolism representing that the time that Elijah is said to herald has not yet, at least this year, has not yet arrived. Eliyahu Hanavi, Eliyahu Hatishbi, Eliyahu Hagil Adi, Elijah the prophet. We talk about him a lot, but he is like that relative or date or business associate who just never shows up. Year after year, we send out our invitation, we pour him a cup and garnished. Not even an email or a text apologizing for skipping our gathering. As a matter of fact, we've come to count on it year after year after year. Elijah is the perpetual eternal no-show. He's been ghosting us, and there's no doubt he will do it again. And yet, and yet we keep on hoping. That is ultimately what this Passover and every Passover is really about. We look back on and we remember our oppression and suffering. We recline at abundant meals as we celebrate our freedom in this moment. But we also recognize that our freedom is incomplete. The final promise of redemption, of liberation, is unrequited. Our satyrs are only foretastes of a deeper, richer, truer freedom that humanity yearns for, envisions, but has yet to achieve. And this year, with the COVID-19 virus arriving to remind us just how limited our freedom is. And Elijah, well, truth be told, most of us will not be opening our doors this year or inviting in strangers who, as the stories would suggest in folk tales, might be Elijah in disguise or as my grandfather used to bring home strangers without a Seder to go to from synagogue. No, this year we are practicing social distancing and many more hand washings than the limited two prescribed for the Seder. This year's Seder will be a struggle, not simply to find a box of kosher for Passover matzah, but a struggle to focus and taste the sweetness and the hope that Passover should and must evoke. In the midst of our anxiety over the health and well-being of family, friends, and colleagues, we will be assembling around our tables with far smaller gatherings where our own max headrooms are present by technology, but safely at a distance. And for some of us, there will be the reminder of those truly absent, those whom we have lost in these past weeks. Our annual toasts and accolades to the cooks and caterers 
will transform instead into prayers for health, fortitude, and insight for those literally on the front lines of a plague that has yet to peak. More so than ever before in my lifetime, the Kos Eliyahu, the cup of Elijah, speaks to me, urging me not to give in to despair, reminding me that its sweetness still awaits and that we must not banish hope however delayed from our tables. Historically, Elijah's cup is so named not because it's intended for him to drink like a roving Jewish Santa for whom we would leave out Manischewitz instead of cookies, no. Rather, it is in Elijah's role as the resolver of undecided rabbinic disputes that the fifth cup is poured but left undrunk. This reflects the rabbinic debate on how many promises were made to our ancestors and how many were fulfilled by the Exodus. Five promises of redemption, it appears, were made, but the events of the Exodus fulfilled only four of those promises. One promise remains a promise of redemption for future days, Mashiach Zeit, when all the world, not only the Jewish people, will be redeemed. And Elijah is assigned this role as the herald of that time, the herald of the Messiah, having not died, but rather in the book of Kings, as we read, having ascended alive into heaven in a whirlwind, set upon a fiery chariot, drawn up by blazing steeds. In tomorrow morning's Haftarah for Shabbat Hagadol, Elijah is again invoked centuries later than the book of Kings texts, in the final verses of the final prophet of the Bible, in the book of Malachi, where it is written, Behold, I will send you Elijah the prophet before the coming of that great and terrible day of the eternal. And he, Elijah, will turn the hearts of parents to their children and the hearts of children to their parents, lest I come and smite the land. Thanks to this verse, Elijah is set up as a perpetual harbinger of the possibility of renewal and the herald of hope. In a, a well-known Talmudic tale, Elijah, himself a master of disguise whenever he's here on earth, informs a despairing rabbi, Joshua ben Levi, not to give up hope. Rabbi Joshua asked Elijah, when will the Messiah come? And Elijah responds, go ask him yourself. Amazed, Rabbi Joshua says, where can he be found? Elijah replies, at the entrance to the city of Rome, the greatest city of its day. How will I recognize him, Rabbi Joshua asks. And Elijah responds, he is sitting amongst the impoverished lepers. Now all of them are untying their bandages all at once, and then they retie them next all at once. But the Messiah, you will notice, unties and then reties each of his bandages separately, one at a time. For he worries that God may call upon him at any moment and he must not be delayed to redeem this world. Now, in this tale, Elijah goes on to explain to Rabbi Joshua that the Messiah would come today, Hayom, truly every and any day, if we were sincere in our hope and not simply in our desperation. For me, though, the symbolism of Elijah's cup is to hold out against despair, even as we seem to be residing at the symbolic gates of Rome amongst the ill and the distraught. 
There is more than the mere possibility of healing and redemption. There remains hope. Yes, we must continue to wait and how we all hate waiting. We want redemption now. We want healing now. But there is hope. It is that cup brimming with sweet wine that asks us to wait a little longer, to wait in hope as we gather together and we taste the sweetness of memories, of each other's faces, of gatherings, and hope in the sweetness yet of the future that will come. Ken Yehiratzon, Shabbat Shalom. As always, I invite your responses to the words I'm privileged to share. Please send me uh, an email or a text. Uh, I won't get till it till after Shabbat, please, but please do. Uh, I'm pleased that a number of people have actually done that, and I will try as timely as I can to respond to comments and questions. Shabbat Shalom. We're going to turn.